Ladies and gentlemen, we have markings. Hello there guys, my name is Chris Shardongster Bomb, but both Theme Park Factual Entertainment and welcome to a Theme Park Newsroom update where today we're going to be talking about some markings that I have found. Now somebody commented on one of yesterday's videos and said markings have been spotted on some pictures that are on this Drayton Talk thread. Massive shout out to Drayton Talk, brilliant brilliant covers of Drayton Manor. I've linked the thread and the specific page where you can find these in the description down below because it's someone's photos and I don't, you know, want to use their photos without their permission, but, um, you know, I, th I figured it's their photos, so um, I'll ask them and then if they say yes, then I'll show them the next time we do an update on this. But, you can go check the pictures out for yourself, but, all, but what today's all about is talking about what I think could happen to G-Force's site, but I can tell you guys that markings have been spotted. Some yellow spray paint uh, has been spotted on the site of G-Force, and uh, it's looking very likely that maybe 2022, 2023 could be the year where we see something happen on this site in terms of opening a brand new attraction. Now, obviously, just a few weeks ago now, about a month or so ago now, Drayton Manor was bought by the Looping Group, born in France, homing many parks such as Pleasurewood Hills, uh, Bagatelle, Aventure and Park, Helen Dorm. They're not massive investors, but because Drayton Manor is the flagship theme park, I think they're going for a family thrill atmosphere with this park. And it's sort of giving me ideas as to what I could see on this site. So uh, we're going to talk about all of that and uh, share with you my predictions as to what I think could come on this site. So before we get started guys, again, I highly recommend you go and check out uh, the thread on Drayton Talk. Again, the specific page in the thread, I've linked it in the description down below. So after this video, you can check out the th um, marking pictures for yourselves. And before we get started guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Shout out to Falco Flair and Brian Galeas. If you want to shout out in our next video, then please comment down down below and let's get into talking about the future of the GeForce site. So for those of you who need a little bit of reminders as to what GeForce actually is, it was a Morrison X-Car vertical coaster, very specific we say that, it's the same model as Dream City, it, Dream City's Dream Coaster uh, over in Dohuk, Iraq, which is a very interesting thought, uh, but there are currently eight Flat, uh, X car coasters out there in different models. Uh, the most famous ones being Formula X at Drivelet Theme Park, Crazy Car at Happy Valley, Fry Jutes at Bryan Park, and Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Studios Florida, which is a very good example. Now, this one has a length of 1,263.1 feet. A height of 82 feet, a speed of 43.5 miles per hour, and has three inversions, a loop and a bent cube and eight. Now, this has been SBNO from 2019 up until the 1st of January 2020, last operating in 2018, and of course it was removed in January 2020, and has a capacity of 550 riders per hour. So then, looking at the site, I showed you a Google Earth image about halfway through talking about the history of GeForce. And um, yeah, I thought I'd deliver just three predictions, just three, you know, normal predictions as to what I think could happen on this site. Now let's go with number one. Prediction number one. Now, not all of them are coasters. I'll get that right right now. Not all of them are coasters. In fact, I'm going to go through my non coast prediction right now. And that is a flat rides package. Now, I'm not talking massive thrill rides that's going to take up the whole site. Like one thrill ride, I'm talking a couple. Now, I've come to the conclusion of two that I think could take this site really, really well. A pair of Lost and Flying Scooters and a Zamperla Endeavour flat ride. Now, this one, the Endeavour, would pay homage to the Enterprise ride the park used to have years, years ago. And, you know, I think it'd be the next generation. And it'd be all about investing in the future. Now, we haven't seen one of these Zamperla Endeavours added to one of the, the Looping Group parks as of yet. However, that doesn't mean it's exclusive to Six Flags or it's exclusive to specific fun fairs or anything like that. Any park could get one of these. So, unless Zamperla has some kind of specific contract with Six Flags, I could see an Endeavour come to the UK. It'd be the UK's first Endeavour, of course. And, um, yeah, I could definitely see 
this come to Drayton Manor. Now, the Larson Flying Scooters. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's a pair of these at Oakwood in the Neverland area. I might be wrong. I know there's a pair of these down at Dollywood in America um, in the Wildwood Grove section. But in terms of the UK, I believe there's a pair of these in Oakwood's Neverland area, which, which they're like Peter Pan original area that opened back in 2013. Um, I believe there's a pair of flying scooters in that area. I think it's called uh, Tink's Flying School, something like that. Uh, things Tinkerbell Flying. Um, I might be wrong about that. But, if, if I am wrong, then yeah, fair enough. But, uh, a flying scooter, a pair of Larson flying scooters, would work very well at this park because it's a family thrill park and, you know, it's the flagship park. It's, you want the, the best of the best for all ages at this flagship park in the group. So, I think a pair of Larson flying scooters would fit that criteria very, very well along with an Endeavour. And I think the site's, you know, I think it's a decent site to carry both attractions. Um, and it would really cause for like a whole like retheme of that whole area. Um, and I think that the whole sort of area where G-Force was, if you put the two new family thrill rides in there, then you've got Shockwave, you've got Air Race, you've got Splash Canyon, you know, if it's going to be open. I mean, I've seen some stuff on the same thread, the Drayton Talk thread, and apparently it needs a lot of TLC before it gets back open. So, uh, we could be looking at a potential Logger's Leap situation here where it's damaged beyond re repair. Or, you know, fixable, uh, not fixable beyond repair. So, uh, maybe we're looking at other, another Logger's Leap situation, but we'll see with that one. Uh, but definitely in terms of the operating ride, Shockwave, uh, Air Race, and of course the two new Family Thrill rides. This would be part of some kind of action area. Again, using the, the action park sort of you know, theme, maybe. Uh, or the action zone or something. Uh, or maybe go with the Raceway theme. Then you could bring the raceway theme into the two family thrill rides you know the endeavor could be themed about speed uh, an aerial ability like an air aerial race kind of thing obviously air race is themed to aerial racing um the last and flying scooters again they could be aerial racing uh endeavor to be fair could be car racing instead or motorbikes because of course the cars and the endeavors are very very thin um, and of course Shockwave, you could do loads of stuff with that, with the theme with that, so uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing to go for. And obviously Storm Force 10 is around about the same area, in the, in the Fisherman's Wharf area, should we say. Uh, it was in the old Fisherman's Wharf. Um, so maybe you can incorporate Fisherman's Wharf into it and create a full action area and let the water side of the action and the water racing be, you know, Storm Force 10 and give that a bit of a new look to it. Um, so it would be interesting to see if they go with that. Now, my other two options, early predictions, are coasters, so fair enough. You have to go with the coaster option for a site like GeForce. Uh, now, I've got two specific ones in mind. A free spin coaster and a raptor coaster. Now, you probably think I'm absolutely crazy, but hear me out. First one is a raptor coaster. So, the raptor coaster is a very good prediction of mine because um, I heard some stuff that Railblazer cost around £7 million, uh, pounds, or I think it's $7 million US dollars, I think it said. Um, but translated to pounds, it, around, you know, over £7 million, pounds, yeah, roughly. So, um, not too pricey compared to what I thought they were. And, um, you know, I think with the buyout, I think Drayton Manor could, you know, I think the Looping Group could invest Drayton Manor with that coaster. Um, and it's a compact coaster as well, it would fit perfectly. Now, we're not looking at one of these long, outstretched Jersey Devil type layouts. We're looking at one of those simple, shorter layouts. We're looking at something very, co well, not very compact, but slightly more compact. Uh, maybe they go with the Intamin ones. Maybe they get in touch with Intamin again and do... Um, do one of the the Intamin uh, versions, like the the Hot Racer concepts, in a few years down the line. Uh, they do one of the concept, uh, compact versions of them, and uh, maybe relocate Maelstrom if the site's too small, uh, which would be interesting. But uh, it'd be interesting to see how they do that. But I would probably put my money more on the Raptor coaster rather than the Intamin concept. Um, in terms of you know size, height, length, whatever inversions, you know I can't even begin to guess it. If they were to go with the Raptor coaster, I think it would be probably the shortest, um, not the longest, um, not the tallest. You know anything like that. It won't be the fastest. It won't have the most inversions. It would probably be the weaker in terms of statistics, but. You know, they can do some different stuff with it to make it unique. They could keep the G4 station. Uh, I think that's not been taken down yet. So, uh, unless... Uh, no, I think... No, I'm wrong. All of it's been flattened. So, 
Um, obviously, they'll have to build a brand new station and things like that. But I think some nearby buildings around the site are still there. So, they could incorporate them into it. Um, but, they could, again, with the raceway theme, with the action raceway, again, incorporate that theme into the Raptor Coaster. So, it would be very nice. Now, the other suggestion I think is more realistic than a Raptor Coaster when looking at the site. And that is a SNS 4D free spin roller coaster. Now, you guys, again, probably think I'm mad, but hear me out. I think a free spin coaster would be a good fit for Drayton Manor. I mean, you've got to look at Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer is a brand new 40 free spin that's opening at Adventureland in Iowa in 2021. Despite this pandemic, a I think they're a family-owned park like Adventureland in Iowa are able to invest in one of these. Now, this could be millions and millions that were saved up, but they've managed to invest in it. A park like Drayton Manor that's got a looping group behind them they could invest in a free spin coaster. Of course, it would be the UK's first. Uh, it would be the UK's um, first free fly coaster, or free spin coaster, should we say. And, um, you know, I think using the landscaping around the site, you could use the old GeForce queue line, or try and create a new queue line that would resemble GeForce cell queue line. And, you know, you could you create this lovely area for this brilliant new coaster. And... You know, I think that a free spin coaster would work at the park because it gives them a different seating arrangement. It gives them a different type of coaster. It gives them a more compact coaster, which, you know, to be fair, pays homage to G-Force a little bit because G-Force was quite a compact, thrilling coaster. Uh, and a free spin coaster, you know, I've seen, you know, I've watched, you know, vlogs from people. I've seen POVs of, you know, these different free spins in the United States, Arashi and Nagashima Spelland, you know, and I've seen different vlogs and people going on it and off-ride videos you know you've got people from all ages riding it you've got you know 11 12 13 year olds riding it you've got 38 year olds riding it you've got 60 year olds riding it um so you know this would be a family thrill coast that would appeal to all ages yes it'd be quite extreme and there would be a specific height restriction on it but that wouldn't exclude it from the fact of it being a uh, a thrill coast that would cater to you know the younger teenagers so it wouldn't be just the upper teenagers and adults type coaster it would appeal to the younger teens as well around the like the 13 12, 13 14 15 mark and you know even 12 even 12 could go on it if it's all enough um so it's one of those compact roll coasters that would apply to a, a, a wider range than a raptor might do and a raptor to be fair has got the kind of similar range range to a free spin it could appeal to the 12 13 14 15 as well as the older teens and the adults so they've both got a family thrill kind of you know target audience so that's why i sort of picked those two out obviously one option could be the flat ride package the other two options are the raptor or the free spin and i think that either one of those could be good additions for the park so uh we'll have to see what happens to it i think if anything was going to happen to this site i think it'll be around 2022 2023 so maybe we could see next year construction take place on site uh, or maybe they'll do some more preparation work and then the main construction begins in 2022 for a 2023 opening or maybe even a 2024 if they wanted to push it even further but the fact we're seeing markings on site now could be a very good sign of a 2022 2023 maybe opening uh, for whatever's going to be coming onto this site. Whether it's a coaster, whether it's a flat ride package, whether it's anything at all. I don't know. But, we'll have to keep close eye on this. So, uh, like I said, Drayton Talk thread in the description down below. You can check out the pictures for yourself. And, uh, obviously, I'll be able to ask and I can get permission. And then, obviously, if anything happen, anything else happens to the site, we'll be able to share them next time as well. But this is definitely something I'm going to keep eyes on. It's definitely something we're going to keep our eyes peeled for. So there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Fear not, guys. All of your video suggestions over the last few months have all been written down and they're all being pre-recorded. So any day there's no theme park newsroom updates, any time there's no news updates at all, I will release you know, some of your video suggestions. I'll get them all recorded as much as I can on each day. And, uh, yeah, just get all them saved, get all them edited, and get them on, you know, in time. But for now, guys, thank you very, very much. I am Coast Shell. Keep living the coast life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Keep subscribing to the channel as well. We're nearly at 2,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. Keep living coast life. Have an awesome day, guys.